Today, I am very excited to be celebrating what I consider to be one of the unsung heroes of the autumn harvest, the beautiful pear. Now, I know the pear is often overshadowed by its cousin, the apple, but I find that really hard to understand because the pear has a ton to offer in terms of flavor possibilities. So today, we are going to celebrate this glorious fruit three delicious ways. Today, I'm going to show you an incredible autumn-inspired salad, a homemade rustic pizza that is so easy to make but is loaded with all sorts of amazing flavors, and finally, simple and sophisticated honey roasted pears that make the perfect dinner party dessert. Now that, to me, sounds like a great way to celebrate pears. Let's kick things off with my autumn-inspired salad. For this salad, we are getting started by candying some pecans. That's right, I just turned candy into a verb. And we're going to do it quite simply by heating up a frying pan on the stove and melting some butter. And once our butter is nice and melted and frothy, we are going to add some brown sugar, basically creating a little candy coating for our nuts. We're going to stir the mixture together until the brown sugar has completely dissolved, and then we are going to toss in our pecans. I'm going to toss these well until the pecans are coated on all sides, and then I'm going to pour out the entire mixture onto a parchment-lined baking sheet. It's important to lay them out in a single layer so they don't stick together while they're drying. After 10 or 15 minutes, they'll be completely dry and ready to use in our lovely salad. In the meantime, I'm going to get started on my salad dressing. For this salad, I'm going to be making a maple balsamic vinaigrette. All right, like any great salad dressing, this one starts with olive oil. And I'm going to add some balsamic vinegar. Usually you're doing olive oil to vinegar in a three to two ratio. And then for sweetness, we are going to add some maple syrup. Now, if you don't have maple syrup on hand, uh, you can definitely do this with honey too. And then I've also got some grainy Dijon mustard. It's important not to omit this step because the mustard holds the entire dressing together. I'm going to season it simply with some salt and some pepper, put the lid on my mason jar and give it a really good shake. And whatever you don't use, you can put in the fridge and marinate some salmon with. Oh yeah! So I've got a big bowl of baby arugula standing by and to that I'm going to add some beautiful pear slices. And I've got my handy dandy melon baller to help me remove the core. This is so much easier to do with pears than it is to do with apples, and it makes me so happy. I'm going to arrange my pear slices on top of my salad, and then we are just going to pile on our beautiful candied pecans all over the top. And then we're going to add some dried cranberry. And then we'll dress. I'm gonna finish this off with some crumbled goat cheese. You could definitely do this with blue cheese too, that would be amazing. Or leave the dairy out. If you're not into the dairy, that's totally fine. What you end up with is this gorgeous salad that has tons of sweetness and crunch and celebrates all the tasty flavors of autumn. Next up, I'm going to show you an amazing homemade pizza that has become one of my all-time favorites. I actually made this last night for dinner and I can tell you between the two of us, there was not a single slice left over. And I'm assuming that's gonna be the case again tonight. I'm gonna get started by caramelizing some onions. And I'm gonna do this really simply by heating up a frying pan on the stove and adding a little bit of oil to my pan. To that, I'm going to add my finely sliced sweet onion, and then I'm just gonna saute it for between eight and 10 minutes on medium low until it starts to get beautifully brown. Then I'm going to remove it from my heat and get started on my dough. Now for this pizza, I am totally cheating with some store-bought dough. If you have a favorite pizza dough recipe that you love, by all means, go ahead and make it from scratch. I just find that on a busy weeknight, this is really easy to put together. All I've done is let my dough come to room temperature, so it's risen just a little. And I'm simply going to turn it out onto a well-greased baking sheet. It is really important to grease your pan well because you don't want it to stick. And once you have stretched your dough out beautifully like so, you can actually leave it to rise again for another 10 minutes or so. Somewhere warm is ideal. In the meantime, I'm going to slice up my beautiful pears. I'm using some Bosch pears, but you really can use any sort of pears you like. All I'm going to do is cut my pears in half, remove the core, and slice them really thinly. 
So I'm just gonna start with a drizzle of olive oil all over here. It's just gonna add a little bit of moisture to the pizza. Next, I'm going to add some shredded mozzarella and then I'm going to load up my beautiful pear slices. The first time I made this recipe, I made the mistake of using just one pear. And I really felt like you lost a lot of the pear flavor in the baking process. So today, I'm going to load up the pear to make sure I get tons of gorgeous pear flavor. Next, I'm going to add my prosciutto. Now this is definitely an optional step. If you wanted to keep this pizza totally veg, you could leave the prosciutto out. But I think it adds a nice, salty, crispy bite to the final pizza. I'm going to top my prosciutto with my caramelized onions, and I'm going to finish all of this awesomeness off with some crumbled gorgonzola cheese. For you blue cheese haters out there, there is absolutely no reason why you can't make this very same pizza with some goat cheese or even some mozzarella cheese if you want something milder. But pear and blue cheese make for a wonderful flavor combination. And the finishing touch on this gorgeous pizza, some fresh cracked black pepper. Into the oven this goes at 450 degrees for between 14 and 17 minutes. Ready for the oven. Oh my gosh, it's like six pounds. You'll know it's ready when the top is super, super bubbly and you start to see the crust brown. And voila, dinner is served in under 30 minutes. And it just happens to taste amazing. Finally on today's menu, I'm going to show you an incredible dessert recipe that is sophisticated enough for a fancy dinner party, but simple enough that it actually can be put together on a lazy night in. It's all put together with just a handful of ingredients. First up, we need to slice our pears. What we're going to do is just start by cutting off the smallest slice of pear from each side. This is just gonna help our pears sit flat in our baking dish, and that's really important. A little melon baller action. What could be easier than this? Nothing. Next, I'm just going to arrange my pear halves on a baking dish and fill each cavity with some crushed walnuts. You could also do this with some crumbled blue cheese. That would be equally amazing. And then we are going to drizzle each with a little bit of honey, or a lot bit of honey, your call, and a sprinkle of cinnamon. How easy is that? That's all there is to it. Into the oven these go at 375 for about 30 minutes, and what you end up with is this gorgeous dessert with just four ingredients and your house just happens to smell amazing, which is a total bonus. I hope you'll give these tasty recipes a try, and if you do, be sure to tweet or Instagram me a photo, because you know I love seeing what you're coming up with in your very own kitchens. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe, because there are lots more deliciousness where this came from.